In your games, oftentimes, you'll want to give your players an achievement, or in Roblox, a badge whenever they do something interesting or they reach a big milestone because it's super satisfying and some people like to hunt for all the achievements in a game, so it increases your game's longevity and replayability. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to implement badges in Roblox Studio. So you can see I got a badge here when I walk into this part. I'll show you how to make a badge, how to implement when you touch a part, and some general strategies when making badges in your game as a whole. Because although they are a great feature to include, they can also ruin the rest of your code and make it a little messy, so you always want to watch out for that. But if you implement them correctly, they will turn out great and will add a nice layer to your games that you might lack if you don't include them. So subscribe to my channel if you enjoy this video. Make sure to like the video as well. And without further ado, let's get into the video. So I'm here in a fresh Roblox base plate. So now let's get to making our badges. So the first thing you want to do is click on game settings. And if your game has not been saved or published to Roblox yet, you want to do that. So click save to Roblox and then name it whatever. I'm going to name it just badge video. And then I can click save. So now I'm in the new Roblox game. So let me try to click on game settings again. This menu should pop up. Go to monetization. I don't know why it's a monetization because badges don't really monetize you anything. But you can still click create badge. And then this will bring up your badge little interface. So I'm just going to choose a random picture for it. And I'll change the name to just you found it or something. So this badge in this scenario is going to be for when you find like a secret area or when you hit a part. So this is when it will give it to you. You can change the description or whatever, but that's good enough for me. I'm going to click preview. And then click purchase for zero robux just make sure it's zero it should always be zero i'm pretty sure they will charge you if you create more than 100 badges like per hour or something which is not an issue for most people so now if i go back to the badge menu you can see it says not seeing badges refresh so i'm going to refresh it and then the badge is here with the beautiful picture the beautiful name and description and now for now i'm just going to copy this id and we will deal with it later. So in its most basic form, giving out your badge is quite simple. So I'm going to go create a new script in service script service. And I'm just going to name the script badge manager or something. Bad, badge manager. Here's the script. So the only thing you have to do to award a badge to a player is first get the badge service. So local badge service equals game get service badge service. There we go. And I'm just going to save the ID to a variable. So I'm going to say local badge ID equals, and then I'm going to use control V to paste the ID that I copied earlier. If you didn't copy it, just go back to game settings, monetization, your badge, click the little three dots and click copy. And you should be able to right click paste it or just use control V to paste it. And all you have to do is say badge service award badge and then send in the player user id and the badge id so hypothetically i could do a test real quick just to show that so i'm gonna wait a couple seconds and then just get the first character who joins so game service players get players and then just one and then I can do the badge ID. So after a couple seconds, this will award me since I'm the only one in the game the badge. In a real game, you'd never do this. You'd ha have a system actually set up. But for our demonstration purposes, it works just fine. Oh, well, I forgot to get the user ID. Let me fix that. So I just got the player. This might be a common mistake if you're using badges. You have to get the player dot user ID. There we go. So now if you wait, wait a couple seconds, you can see badge awarded in the bottom right of my screen. That is perfect. But 
in reality, you are never going to award a badge like this. You're never just going to give it to some arbitrary player. A very common use case for badges is when a player reaches a certain location, or they find a secret location, or they just go somewhere or do something. And usually that requires touching a part. So I'm going to show you now a system, a really clever system, to make a give a badge whenever you hit a part. And it's going to be pretty simple, pretty non-intrusive to your game, because that's one hard thing about badges. You don't want your badges to be coupled to your main game mechanics. You want them to stay to the side and just kind of do their thing, because if you need to change something in your main game, you don't want to go and change all the badge code to that. That would just be kind of annoying. So I'm going to go into workspace and just create a arbitrary part. And this will be like a detector part, so a player can like walk into it. For testing, I'm just going to make it partially transparent. In a real game, you'd probably have it fully transparent. And make it anchored and no can collide. And then name doesn't really matter. And what you want to do is, first of all, if you don't have it, I'll have it in the description. Install a plugin called the like tag manager or tag plugin. And go open the tag window. And you want to create a new bat a new tag, I should say, and I'm going to call this tag badge contact. And if you don't know what I'm really doing here and what all this tag stuff is, I have a video on the collection service and tagging. I will link it right now. But I'm going to assign this block a badge contact tag by clicking a little hole there, and it'll create a check there, which is what I want. And then I'm going to add an attribute to this part, and I'm going to change it to a number. And this will be the badge ID attribute. And I'm going to paste that same ID that we got before in this badge ID. So what I want to implement here is all the parts tagged with this badge contact tag will award the player the badge ID given when they touch it. So you can put these around your map wherever. You don't have to copy and paste scripts. You don't have to copy and paste code. You don't have to change the, bad, the badge ID in each script or whatever. You'll be able to have a very, very simple script that will do it all for you. So I'm going to go back to the badge manager script. I need uh, the collection service for the tags. So I'm going to do local collection service equals game. Get service. Collection service. There we go. And then I'm also going to need the player service to detect the player. So I'm going to do local players equals game, get service players. There you go. So now I want to run through all the parts tagged with the badge contact tag. So I'm going to say, say for i part in i pairs collection service get tagged. And then we want to get the ones tagged with the badge contact tag. Now, you could have named this tag whatever you want. It's just badge contact, like the stuff they contact to get a badge. Makes a lot of sense to me, so that's why I chose it. And then after that, we're going to put do. And then we want to hook up a touched event. So part.touched connect function. And then the touch, will be, the touch part will be called hit in my case. We're going to say local character equals hit find first ancestor, which is a model. And then we're going to say local player equals players get player from character character. So what this will do is whenever the parts touch, and by the way, we don't need to really, really need to disconnect this event because we're not going to be connecting it and disconnecting it multiple times throughout the game. We only do this once at the very beginning of the game, so don't worry about that, that we're not disconnecting this. So whatever the part's touched, we take the hit part, the part that it's touched by, we check if there's a model because your character is always a model, and but whenever you touch something, it's a part within your character model. So we try to get back to the character, and then we try to run this function, which checks if there is a player associated with that said model, which and if there is, that means it's your player character. So we say if player, so if the player exists, then all we got to do is award the badge. And that, as I showed earlier, was very trivial. So all you do is badge service, award badge. I think I spell award correctly, badge. And we say the player.user ID. Make sure it's the player.user ID, not just the player, as I messed up earlier. And we want to do the part get attribute badge. ID. Now, in case stuff isn't working and you're like, oh, why isn't it working? It might be easier for you to first assert that part 
get attribute badge ID exists and then say like there is no badge ID assigned. Just in case you, you're forgetful and you forget to put the badge ID into your part. Because if you don't, it'll give you a really funky error message that you probably won't trace to just not putting this attribute in. So putting this assert here lets you know on startup that there is no badge ID assigned to the given part. And you can also add the part information if you want to. This is just ease of use. You don't need this assert line. You don't really need it if you always remember to put this badge ID. But if you forget, it might lead to some confusion and has to me before. So just for good user experience with your developers, you could just leave this here. So let's test it out. So let's go find our part. Hit the part. So really interestingly, Roblox released an update like yesterday or today that changed the badge service. So before it would just award you the badge anytime you hit the thing, like while you're testing in Roblox Studio. But now it does not. It did like a day ago when I made this, when I tested it out. So that is quite annoying, but you're just going to have to trust me that the badge will get awarded to a new player. If you really want to check, badge service does have a function called uh, user has badge async, which you can use to check if a user has a badge. It returns true or false. So if you don't believe me, then you can say like print user has badge, the player.user ID, and the part get attribute badge ID just to make sure that your player actually has the badge. It's kind of annoying that it doesn't work in testing anymore, but whatever. So there's one other thing I have to touch on, and that is coupling your badges with the rest of your game. So here I have a simple example. When the player joins, we create like a basic money thing, and leader stats is just basic just normal stuff. It'll just give them some leader stats in the top right corner of the screen. Let's just verify that it works. So I have zero money. So let's say you want to give an achievement or a badge when a player reaches a certain number of money. Now, the simplest way to do it would just be to say, like right here, like money dot change, and then connect whatever, and say, oh, if they have a certain amount of money, award said badge. But that would just be bad for a couple of reasons, because it would just link your badges to your player handler, which just is not smart in case you ever want to change it. Or if you're making, if you're refactoring your code, you're changing a bunch, it just would not work. So one good strategy to use when you're awarding badges is the observer pattern, which basically means using events. So in my case, I have a bindable event parented to my player manager. If you're using other libraries, you could use like a signal library or something for that. So whenever a player joins, I'm going to say script dot player joined fire and give them the player. And for this demonstration, I'm just going to give them the money value too. So what I can do now is I can go back to my badge manager and say um, script.parent dot player manager dot player joined connect function player money and then we can say money dot changed connect function and then the value of money would be like value and so we can say if value is greater than some number like ten or a thousand. And just say print your rich or something like that. In reality, you would award a badge, but since I've already awarded this badge once and I cannot award it again, there's really no point to. So what this does here is it allows like other people in your development team or yourself when you forget to always know that your badge code is going to be within like one script or one module. So you don't ever have to go back and forth and figure out where you're awarding a badge or what's going on so you always know where things are and how they work in relation to one another so let's just try this out just double check things are working and i screwed up we have to do a dot event connect for a bindable event i'm used to using with signals with knit so that's probably the issue but now if i go and change my money value to something like 10,000. You can say it says you're rich, which is perfect. Now, on the surface, this may seem like a trivial thing to do. Why can't I just put the badge where it's most convenient? And it's just because as your game gets bigger, as your backend code gets more 
convoluted and spaghetti like we want to reduce spaghetti we don't like spaghetti in our code we want it to be nice and chopped up nice and neat so other developers and yourself when you forget can figure out where the code is and what it does and how it does it and all of each domain like the player domain where player joining in uh, data stores are probably handled too is separate from the achievement domain because this should not infect other parts of your code it should not be a point of error it should just exist and award badges when it sees fit and i will have an article on the observer pattern in the description if you want to check it out it's a really nice read it's part of a book which i really enjoyed called game programming pattern so read that if you will but that's about it for this video so i hope you enjoyed learning about badges about how to get them, how to program them, and some common practices on when to use them. If you're not on the video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel for more Roblox scripting content. Comment any questions or suggestions down below. But with that, I hope you have a nice day and goodbye.